So here we have a very friendly looking real valued integral. Just pause the video and try and calculate that integral using all the tricks that you have at your disposal based on complex calculus. So the first thing that we need to figure out is what is the complex valued function that we're going to integrate. Now in this case, it's pretty straightforward. Let's just replace x by z everywhere. And then we get this integral here. So z squared plus a squared squared. Now in terms of contour, very important of course, is that we include the positive real axis because that's the part that we're interested in, right? From zero to infinity. And then let's close in the upper half plane and let's stop here. And let's hope that the negative real axis is somehow related to the positive real axis by symmetry. So we have this real axis here and then we have CR, which is just the circular segment in the upper half plane. So we know that our integral here can be broken apart into two parts. So first of all, we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then because we are on the real axis again, we can write this as follows. And then we have a contribution from this circular segment CR. And that is equal to 2 pi j times the residue of all the singularities that are inside the contour. This function has two singularities, plus and minus j a. Since a is a positive number, we only need to worry about j a as being the singularity inside our contour. Okay, good. Um, so the residue at j a. Let's spend some time to calculate that residue. Now, so residue at j a. The problem in this case, well, not really a problem. The fact is that j a here is not a pole of order one, as you can see here, but a pole of order two, thanks to this nasty exponent over here. So this means that we cannot use the simple formula, but rather we need to use the more complicated looking formula, saying that we can calculate this residue as the limit of z approaching uh, j a of one divided by a factorial, the factorial being equal to the order of the pole minus one. So this becomes two minus one, that's, that's one, so divided by one factorial. And then we take the derivative with respect to z a number of times. How many times? Well, again, the order minus one, so this becomes two minus one, so just taking the derivative once. And then we have our function, so that's one over z squared plus a squared squared times z minus the location of our singularity that we're interested in raised to the power of two. So if we evaluate this bunch over here, then we can calculate the residue. So let's proceed. The limit at j a of the derivative. Um, so the only thing that we're left with here are the terms related to the other singularity. So we need to calculate this thing over here. So this becomes the limit at j a of the derivative of something raised to the power of minus two. So this minus two comes in front and then we decrease our exponent by one. So we end up at minus three or one over something to the third power. So one over z plus j a cubed. Good, let's continue. So that's basically minus two, one over, and then we have uh, two j a cubed. So that's minus two, eight. J squared is minus one. So times J is minus J and then A cubed. Okay, let's also bring this J to the numerator. Then we pick up an extra minus sign. So this gives us three minus signs in total. So that's a minus one. So minus J and then this becomes four A cubed. 
So this is the residue. That's very useful, of course. Um, another thing we need to worry about is the contribution here from the circular segment in the limits of big R going towards infinity. If you look at our integrand, there's nowhere a, a complex exponential inside. So we need to look at the, the big limit theorem. And for the big limit theorem, we need to consider what happens at infinity. So if z approaches infinity of our integrand, so that's z squared plus a squared squared, but not just our function f of z, we should not forget to multiply it by z minus zero in this case. So let's not get confused. Make sure to put in zero here and not ja or something. ja is related to the residues that we're calculating at the, the, the singularities. The point that we need to fill in here, zero in this case, corresponds to the origin of the, the circle. So this is what we need to fill in. Anyhow, um, the power of z in the denominator is much bigger than the one in the numerator. So at infinity, this whole thing will just collapse, becomes zero. And this also means that the contribution from that part vanishes. So now we're basically almost there. We can write down that the integral of minus infinity plus infinity dx x squared plus a squared squared is equal to 2 pi j the residue which we spent some time calculating minus j for a cubed so um, this becomes pi to a cubed However, the question that we needed to answer was not the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, but rather the integral from zero to infinity. However, this function here is extremely even, so we can just divide our results by two to end up with pi divided by four a cubed. And there we have it, that's our end result.